Do you get confused trying to figure out how many ions you need to form a neutral ionic compound? My name is Leia Fish from LeiaForSci.com and in this video I will show you how to find the correct ratio of ions to form a neutral ionic compound. In part two of this series, we looked at how ions form from neutral atoms. We also introduced the idea that ions of opposite charge will come together to stabilize each other and balance their charge. We looked at the formation of a simple compound when Na plus comes together with Cl minus to form NaCl. But unlike a molecule where you have a definite ratio, for example, H2O will always have two hydrogens and always have one oxygen, ions are not like that. Let's simplify these structures by simply showing sodium as a positive ion and simply showing chlorine as a negative ion. The way this attraction works is the positive sodium will attract negative chlorides to balance its charge. Notice that I didn't show one, I'm showing a lot of negatives coming towards that chlorine. But then when I have all these negatives, more positive ions will come to balance the negative charge and then more negatives will come to balance the positive charge. Now I won't continue this because it can go into infinity, but the idea is that you will always have negatives coming to balance your positives and positive coming to balance your negative to the point where you get a large ionic crystal made up of hundreds and thousands of atoms coming together. So why do we show NaCl as just one? We're simply showing the ratio. Every one sodium will be balanced by one chlorine and regardless of how large your crystal is, the ratio will always be one to one. But what if I have something slightly more complex? For example, if I have Ca2+, which is a calcium ion, and I try to combine that with Cl- the chloride ion, I can't simply put them as one to one. If I write this out as CaCl, this is incorrect. And the reason for that is the charges are not balanced. The way you check the net charge is simply count up the charge on your cation, which is your positive ion, and the charge of your anion, which is your negative ion. In this case, we have plus two minus one, and if you don't believe me, punch it into a calculator, but you don't get zero, you get positive one. To make sure that your ionic compound is neutral and that your atoms are perfectly balanced, you will require your one calcium ion to combine with two chlorine ions. This way you have your plus two combining with two negative one ions, that gives me plus two minus two and that's zero. Now perhaps it's easy to recognize that two has to balance one, but what if you're not sure? I want to show you a trick to recognize how many of each ion you need regardless of how simple or complex it looks. But first, two things to recognize. The first is the way you write the charge. Calcium written as Ca2 plus or calcium written as Ca plus two are both correct because I have the number two and I have the plus sign telling me that it has a positive charge. And the reason I have to write the two is to show that yes, it's positive, but specifically positive times two because calcium lost two electrons to form this charge. The second thing to recognize is the invisible one. Notice when I write Cl minus, I don't have a number. You won't be incorrect if you write Cl minus one or Cl one minus, but this is redundant and unnecessary. If you don't have a number, but you have the atom or you have the charge, there's a self-understood one. That means that Cl minus implies Cl with a charge of negative one, but because it's one, we don't put the number and simply understand that it's there. Keep those things in mind when you look at my trick, which I call the crisscross method. We'll start with sodium chloride and let's take a look. We have a positive sodium and a negative chlorine, both of which have an invisible one after the charge. For the crisscross method, you take the number of your cation and drag it down after your anion, and then you take the number of your anion and drag it down to your cation. When I write the product, I have Na with the number one that I drag down and Cl with the number one that I drag down. But remember, if your number is one, you don't need it, it'll be invisible, and that's how we get NaCl. If we try the same thing for calcium combined with chlorine, this time we actually have a number. We drag the two down after the chlorine and we drag that invisible one down to the calcium. And this is a definite way to recognize that the compound formed is CaCl2. Let's look at something even more complex. For example, if I give you Al3 plus and I ask you to form an ionic compound with O2 minus, I drag the three from aluminum 
down to the oxygen, the two from oxygen down to aluminum, and this gives me a product of Al2O3. The reason I like this method is when you're starting to think of higher numbers, it gets a little tricky, but here you have a guaranteed way to figure out what you have. And just in case you want to prove to yourself that it is correct, let's break up this ion. Al2O3 implies that we have two aluminums, which have a charge of 3 plus, and three oxygens, which have a charge of 2 minus. If we multiply 2 times positive 3, we get 2 times 3 equals positive 6, and we multiply 3 times negative 2, we get negative 6. Since negative and positive 6 are the same value, they cancel each other out. One final trick that I want to leave you with is what happens when we have two atoms that have the same charge and it's not one. For example, what if we try to combine calcium with oxygen? Calcium and oxygen both have a charge of 2. If we bring down the 2 from calcium and then the 2 from oxygen, we get a product that looks like this, Ca2O2. But remember what we said earlier, the reason we need those numbers is to provide a ratio between the atoms. Ca2O2 can really be Ca1 million and O1 million, but the ratio is 2 to 2. However, you always want to keep it in the lowest possible ratio. So if I divide both of them by the same number, I haven't changed the ratio because I'm applying the same math to both. And 2 divided by 2 gives me 1, giving me just Ca and O without a number. The ratio of Ca2O2 and CaO is the same, but CaO is cleaner, and that's why we use it. Be sure to join me in the next video where we look at even more difficult examples using multiple polyatomic ions. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layofersci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash Still here. Don't forget to subscribe.